My name is Lily Arguello, and I am the Director of Membership at PIRA, Professionals and Human Resources Association. Um, just a, uh, some housekeeping before we get started. Um, I usually have someone on the back end helping me, so if you you hear a pause, I'll be pausing regardless throughout the next 60 minutes, but it might be that I am doing something on the back end, so I apologize for that. Um, this orientation is being recorded. We, we record all of our member orientations, and after this orientation, sometime this afternoon, I will send you an email with uh, the link to our YouTube channel so that you can view any of our orientations. Uh, we, we covered pretty similar information, but um, you know things change, so uh, one orientation might have outdated information. So uh, we are recording this. I will send you the link to our YouTube channel after uh, this webinar sometime this afternoon. I will also send you a PDF of these slides. So uh, no need to take notes on what is on the slide, but feel free to take notes on any additional information that um, you need that I don't necessarily have on a slide, but I say verbally, et cetera. Um, feel free to use the chat. I'd like to make this, this is pretty informal. I want to tailor this to you. So I want to make sure that you walk away in the, uh, with the information you need. We have 60 minutes together. And the way I do that is um, to make sure that you feel comfortable asking any questions, either directly to me or uh, you know, in front of everybody in the chat. Um, and also uh, there are uh, there is a poll that I will do and I'll get to the agenda in a moment. Uh, I'm just letting some more people in and hopefully everyone is able to join, uh, but let's get started. Uh, so we're in the welcome and general update uh, phase. Um, of today's agenda, I did mention I'm going to do a poll because I want to know from you, so please respond to it. What is the information you need to walk away from today to ensure that you get the most out of your Pyra membership? Or if you're not a member, make a decision about is Pyra for you? I'm hoping it is for you, but I want you to invest in something that you think, you think makes sense for you. So please let me know what is of interest, what, why you came to this webinar. And if um, the poll you know, doesn't cover that, just tell me in the chat. You can send me a private chat or uh, it just uh, include the chat uh, content to everybody. I'm really excited today. I have a special guest, Mark. Halushka, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Mark. And feel free to chime in at any time. He is the uh, chair of Pyra Long Beach, and I'm actually broadcasting today from Long Beach. So um, anyone in Long Beach, let us know. Uh, but really excited to have him join the webinar today. Then I'll be going through an overview of the association, uh, talking about some member benefits, the opportunities to learn and network at Pyra, and just wrap wrap things up. Oh, great, Todd. I'm glad you're in Long Beach too. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and, but also feel free. I hope that you got my email earlier today reminding you of the orientation. If you have questions along the way, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, I do have a lot to cover. So, um, but we might have time for you to unmute and ask your question live and for us to respond to it live. Great. Fantastic. Well, let's get going uh, into a general update. So <clears throat> the pandemic forced us to go virtual. So many of you may know that uh, our conference, uh, we have the California HR conference. We also offer that virtually. Uh, we're very well known for our California employment law update. We've been doing these conferences for more than 30 years. We've been around 80 years this year. So, um, but now we're doing it virtually and uh, the pandemic really helped us transition to that. Not only do we do our conferences virtually, but we offer up to three uh, webinars per month with fantastic content and recertification credit free for members. Um, 
while during the pandemic, a lot of our chapters didn't meet in person because we couldn't, uh, many of our chapters are meeting in person. And what the pandemic did is also help us focus on what our members need. So uh, for example, Pirate North OC discovered that some of their members can't really meet early in the morning. So what they've done is every month, there's a different timing for their meeting. So one month they'll do a morning breakfast meeting, very traditional. The next month they'll do a lunch workshop type of meeting. And then the following month they'll do an evening uh, uh, social. Uh, sometimes the social has a program, programmatic component, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, we really, our chapters are just doing a fantastic job. This month we are full of activities and uh, toward the end, you're gonna be, I'm gonna provide you with a list of uh, in-person meetings and webinars that I hope you decide to register for. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, main point here is we are always adding uh, meetings and webinars into uh, our calendar. That is the best place for you to look for What's coming up? If you're interested in certain topics, uh, finding a topic on there. Also meeting places. Uh, our chapters are not brick and mortar. So they may change their meeting location from month to month. So that's where you're gonna wanna check to see that. So I do see a lot of questions in the chat. Let me just get through this poll and, um, and uh, uh, we can kind of prioritize uh, how and, and introduce myself a little bit more and uh, we'll prioritize those and I'll get to all of them because I definitely want you to um, get your questions answered. So let me see if I could launch this poll. I apologize. I have a slow connection here. I'm going to launch a poll and it's asking you what information are you interested in receiving from this webinar? Uh, there are 10 of us. On. So I'd love to get all of your participation here. This will give me a quantitative view of what I should be covering today. Let me see, nobody has answered yet. Please answer, okay, seminars. A lot about seminars and conferences. Uh, HR certification. Pirate chapter. Okay, two more people I have yet to other and Pyrisha. Okay, if it's other and you haven't put it in the chat, uh, please put it in the chat now or send me a private note. Uh, I think we have most people, I'll give it another 10 seconds. If the last person wants to respond to the poll, that would be fantastic. And then I'll end the poll and okay, let me end the poll. And here I'm sharing the results. So many of you are interested in talking or knowing a little bit more about the uh, Pyro seminars and conferences. Uh, if you have a specific question about that, uh, let me know in the chat. And uh, let me stop sharing and take a quick view of the chat. Okay. Okay, people are interested in, in compliance. So we'll talk a little bit about um, some tools, online tools. We have an award-winning compliance center with Mineral. And also I suggest attending, uh, a, we have webinars and we have our big conference in May that has a pretty robust employment law track. So uh, Leah, hopefully you don't mind me uh, calling your name out, but that's what I would be watching out for in this conversation. Okay. How to leverage Pyra for networking and helping with job search activities. Okay, um, I will, uh, Todd will, will cover the networking piece. Uh, I don't know how much I have uh, here covered on the Career Center, but I will follow up with that. And if we have time, we could talk about that online. Uh, uh, volunteering for the conference. Uh, we, I will definitely talk about that. I will get to that. Jerry, thank you for being here. Uh, there are opportunities to volunteer 
Um, so please send me an email if you're interested. Uh, just today, we sent out an email uh, to people who are on our volunteer database, uh, uh, letting them know about the timeline. And um, I can add you to that list, uh, please. And I can share a little bit more about that as we move through here. But basically, when you volunteer for one of our conferences, um, the larger conference is May, is May 20th through the 22nd. Uh, what happens is that you will be selected to volunteer one day and get the next day free to attend the conference. Uh, so there's not a discount per se. Uh, it, it's kind of a working position. You work one day and then you enjoy the conference the next day and you get the conference on demand uh, included. Uh, so that's how the volunteering works. And uh, let's move forward and we'll get to all of your questions. And again, if you, if you want to raise your hand, I think we should have some time to cover any specific information that you need. Well, anyway, I'm here in the middle. My name is Lily Arguello. I am the Director of Membership, as I mentioned before. I joined Pyra in 2014. I uh, got this job on LinkedIn uh, because of my volunteer leadership uh, uh, work. I, uh, Rafael Rivera, our CEO, was connected with someone that I helped, uh, I worked with to start the professional chapter of the National Association of Women MBAs. And that's how he found me. I was uh, doing a membership and partnership building for the Girl Scouts of Greater LA at that time. I started my career as an organizational development consultant, working for a boutique firm um, that specialized in helping rapidly growing entrepreneurships professionalize. And so, uh, you know, that OD piece is near and dear to my heart. So when I was approached up with this position, it was a great marriage between my OD HR strategy experience and my membership experience. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. I love working with Pyra and I love working with our members and our volunteer leaders. On my right, uh, on the right-hand side of, the, of this slide, is Alisa Sapian. She is my right hand, who is on maternity leave. Can you believe that? Uh, but I'm really excited for her to um, have her first baby. And so uh, I'm uh, solo flying today, but uh, she is usually, I do have a part-time person, um, but Alisa would have been the the first person you'd likely uh, get in contact with when you call the main line or you uh, reach out to Pyra, and she's always fantastic. Our uh, part-time temp person is also fantastic. She's a UCLA student, and she'll do the best uh, she can to, to help you. We are very accessible. It is my commitment to our members that if you uh, email or call me, I respond within 24 hours. Usually, I respond pretty quickly, but please feel free to uh, email me. I'd rather you email me. If you are, can't get into the website, can't get in onto Mineral, which is our partner site, um, offering some of our membership benefits, just email me, and I uh, can usually get you in on the back end and send you instructions on how to do that. So please reach out to me. I, I'd rather you let me know that you're frustrated with something so I can help than you just say, oh God, this, this just didn't work for me. Um, again, I promise to get back to you that day, but usually within 24 hours. On the left is Matthew Pallets, um, and uh, he is a volunteer leader. He is the chair of the membership committee. He represents membership and our members at the board level. Also very accessible. He's usually at all of our uh, large conferences. And if you have any questions and feel more comfortable reaching out to him, he's a great resource as well. Uh, I have a special guest, Mark. Uh, please unmute and, and show yourself. I'd love for you to spend a second introducing yourself to everybody. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for that introduction. Um, my name is Mark Halushka. I'm the board chair for the Pyra Long Beach chapter. And uh, I've been a part of uh, the Society for Human Resource Management and PIRA since 2006. I've been really active with the South Bay uh, chapter, and, but more recently the Long Beach chapter where this past year I served as the treasurer on the board of directors. And uh, most recently this year I've been elected as board chair. So really, really excited about the journey that we're gonna take on this upcoming 2024 year. We've got a lot of great things planned. 
um, some great networking opportunities, uh, educational workshops and seminars planned, and a couple of exciting mixers on the horizon here. Mm -hmm. So it should be a really, really <laughs> fun time. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, as you all know, uh, Society for Human Resource Management is a national organization, and uh, each state has their own local affiliate. Pyra is the local affiliate to SHRM, and there's several chapters located throughout California, uh, but one of the best, Long Beach chapter. <laughs> Come on and join. We'd love to have you. <laughs> Do you know that SHRM is now uh, uh, leaning away from calling themselves the Society of Human Resource Management? This is I like did not. The latest news. Oh, They're God. Now SHRM, period. SHRM. There we go. National. They are, um, and that kind of gets me into the, this overview because someone had a question about uh, Pyra and SHRM. Yep. So, um, Pyra is the largest SHRM affiliate in the world. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> I know we're the largest in the United States and um, I just, because I have that data, but I don't have the data about their affiliate in China or India. That's also thriving now, but yeah. So SHRM is now just SHRM period. I'm still getting used to it. I think we need to kind of revise some of our logos. Right. But um, <laughs> interesting uh, little tidbit of information. Pyra was established in 1944. And uh, uh, sure, and we were established here in downtown LA. If some of you have been around Pyra for a long time, you may recall that we were called districts and Pyra Los Angeles was district one. And that's because in 1944, a group of personnel managers got together and they started to talking about what is, uh, it was called industrial relations back then or personnel, the personnel department. And they started talking about what are the skills and tools and behaviors that human resource professionals need to help an organization uh, uh, be successful. So they started talking about what sort of training do they need? What sort of certifications do they need? How do we get these people together? And they established PIRA, Professionals in Industrial Relations. Yeah, association back in 1944. Now, this is when I, I love to put this in. SHRM was established in 1948. So we're actually a little older than SHRM. They were established I, somewhere in the Midwest. I want to say Illinois or uh, Indiana. I, 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 I forget. But um, so we are a little older than SHRM. But SHRM, like Mark says, they have I think 500 affiliates in the US and over 200,000 members. So uh, here's our mission statement. I'm not gonna read it for you all. It, 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 I think you guys can get the gist of it, but we, we exist to help human resource professionals in California. Most of our chapters, however, are in Southern California and Pyra Long Beach is one of a Pyra chapter. Uh, but we exist to uh, ensure that you have the professional development that you need, that you, uh, we, we provide you with innovative programming to keep you um, up to date with HR trends and also high impact networking opportunities. So just a shout out to Todd, uh, ask Mark for his email address so he can tell you about these awesome socials that Long Beach has going on. Um, because uh, I, I I, I, that's where I was actually a Pyra member before I ever dreamed of being on staff. And the first meeting I went to was a Pyra Long Beach meeting. So they're a great group and I encourage you to go. Um, and uh, Mark, I may have you talk about you know, where you guys meet, et cetera, when we get to information about the chapters, because I know some people asked about that. Um, we are primarily volunteer led. Tara Fournier is our president of the board. And uh, she actually worked for SHRM at one point. She's currently the chief people officer for Enthusiast Gaming. Uh, all of our volunteer leaders are very accessible, very vested in the success of our members and our HR community. Uh, she, you could always see her at our conferences and, and uh, she even may be speaking uh, with attorneys because uh, during the pandemic, she was right in there with you trying to navigate all the different laws and infectious disease compliance stuff. So she's really uh, enjoys sharing that information. Now I am staff because we are the largest SHRM affiliate. We have the largest staff of any 
Sherm affiliate as well. And I'm staff, Pi uh, Rafael Rivera is staff and our CEO. So he is my boss. Always feel free to reach out to him um, if you have any questions or concerns. But I really credit him for taking Pyra to the next level. He joined a couple of years before I did. He rebranded the Pyra Annual Conference, the California HR Conference. He rebranded our Pyra Legal Update that we're very well known for. Um, to the California Employment Law Update. So we are here to serve California HR professionals. And uh, you know I love working for him and uh, he's just a great visionary and got us through the pandemic, which you know has been a challenge. I think we're still in recovery mode uh, with respect to the pandemic. I am going to uh, pause. Oh, great. Wonderful. I'm so glad that you and Todd and Mark are connecting. Wonderful. It's fantastic. That that's what we're about. Is um, you know, I'll tell I'll talk a little bit more about this, but I think one of the key benefits of being a Pyra member is the community. Uh, I, when I joined Pyra Long Beach, I got very connected with some of uh, Mark. I don't even know if they go to as many meetings anymore, but Paula Cohen was the membership uh, chair for Long Beach. <laughs> and uh, I would, I would always ask her, why, why do you join Long? Why did you join Pyra? Why are you continuing to be a member? And she said, I met my best friend at a Pyra meeting, which sounds pretty bizarre, but you never know. Life is an adventure. So please, you know, uh, we're going to talk about networking a lot and professional development a lot during the next, I have 40 minutes now, uh, but attend Pyra meetings in your area. As a member, you could attend any Pyra meeting at the member uh, price because you never know who you're going to meet. Uh, and I'll get more into that in a bit. Uh, I am updating these demographic numbers, but just to give you a sense of um, who our members are, we're right around 3,500 members, a little low. Um, at our highest in 2019, uh, one, we had the largest California HR conference ever in 2019. And in April, I think it was April of 2019, we had 4,800 members. We were on the road to hitting our 5,000 member goal. Boom, pandemic hits. Uh, and what's the first thing to go um, at organizations when they're cost cutting or they need to invest in other things? Memberships and unfortunately, professional development sometimes is cut in a lot of organizations. So that's why we're seeing lower numbers, but I think we're on the rebound and growing. Also important on this slide is right around 43% of our members are at the HR manager and generalist level. So that's our sweet spot. That's what people know us for, um, which is fine. Uh, another 28% of our members are at the HR director and above. So HR directors, HR VPs, uh, C CHROs, CPOs. Um, are, are in that category. Um, something else I want to bring up to you is right around 9% are what we call service providers. And those are natural partners to HR or HR adjacent folks. So I'm thinking uh, uh, insurance brokers, uh, 501, 401k uh, advisors, financial advisors, wellness um, uh, industry folks, staffing folks. So uh, most of our service providers, they come here to build relationships just like you. I, I, uh, there's some that can get a little aggressive. And if, it, if they do, don't hesitate to reach out to me and Raphael because we'll have a conversation with them. They know that that's not the, the, the approach that we encourage. Um, most of them, however, are great to get to know. For example, I went to Mark. I don't know if... Um, uh, I think Guillermo is now at Pyra Los Angeles, but he is, uh, he was with Bolton. He was a, a broker with Bolton. Now he's now Bolton's IMA. And at a Pyra Long Beach meeting, he, he stood up and said, if anyone's interested in the HR director job, I just heard about an opening in downtown LA. So what I'm saying is that these people are connectors. It's their job to connect with HR. It's their job to help HR, uh, uh, find solutions. And so a lot of people will go to them like, we need a new HR director. So they're the first to know about open positions and uh, great connectors. So don't shy away from them. Um, another important note, someone asked about HR certification. 40% of our members are HR certified through HRCI and SHRM. I received my SHRM SCP or 
I passed the SHRM SCP in 2021. I just recertified. <clears throat> so as we go along, if you have any specific questions about HR certification, let me know. I'd be happy to um, answer those specific questions live. Uh, top four industries really quick here, uh, manufacturing, consulting, nonprofit, and healthcare. That's where uh, the most represented industries by our membership. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, this is, uh, I think someone wanted to ask about uh, our chapters. And Mark, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about Pyra Long Beach and just you know the culture of your chapter here. But what I'd like to say here is we have 18 chapters in Southern California. Mark is a chair of Pyra Long Beach here on the West, uh, West Coast here, the Western region. As a Pyra member, you can attend any chapter, but you do select your preferred chapter. And usually that's the chapter where your office is or you reside uh, and things of that sort. Mark, do you want to add a little bit about Long Beach? Yeah, Long Beach chapter is, uh, Long Beach is a large community, um, you know, several zip codes deep and it covers a large area. You know, we've got, uh, to the north of us, the um, South Bay chapter, to the south, the North uh, OC chapter, um, Gateway Cities, and um, is a part of our region. And, you know, we invite members to consider volunteering. We have an emphasis on, you know, everyone uh, contributes to their unique strengths and their shared goals. And, you know, we're really, really uh, invested in the impact on the personal and professional development for all our HR practitioners that choose to join. Um, you know, and we invite people to actively engage through membership, uh, volunteerism and event participation. So uh, we're, we're really excited for 2024 and we can't wait to, um, we've got a couple of good events starting in March and April. Um, so we can't wait uh, to, ever, to see everybody at our next event. Where are you going to uh, be in March? Can you give uh, us kind of a heads up? Well, you know, I'd like to also say that our program chair, who's also new to uh, Pyra, but Molly is on the line too. So she's our program chair and she's got some exciting, exciting events lined up. Uh, I think the first one is in March and, um, but we normally meet at the Grand in Long Beach. That's our is local that meeting Willow? ground. Yes, that's right on, on Willow. And it's a great, uh, it's a great venue. Um, we usually do lunchtime meetings, so if you know, get a break throughout the day, you get some lunch, you get some professional development and some high impact networking, um, and it's a fun time. And then you can go back and finish out your day at, at work or not, but <laughs> we, we, we get you fed and we get you some professional development and some really good networking and some lasting friendships in the HR community, so. It's super exciting. Awesome. And Molly, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you want to unmute, that will be great. Uh, while, while you think about that, um, th thank you for bringing up the meal. So you pay for your uh, membership and you also pay for the meetings uh, because the chapters have to cover the venue costs. There's always a meal, either breakfast or lunch. And so the cost usually ranges between $25 to $45, depending on the chapter and the venues. Things have gotten a little bit more expensive. I know we're all kind of fighting the inflation uh, issue, uh, but that's what a chapter meeting looks like. You, you, go to, you register in advance, hopefully. If you're not, if you're a pirate member and you're going to a, a meeting that's not your chapter, I definitely suggest that you uh, uh, register in advance. Uh, some chapters will ask you to pay a little bit more if you wait to uh, uh, register on site, but that's fine. Uh, there's a networking component, uh, there's a meal, and then there's professional development. Probably 95% of our chapter meetings um, offer recertification credit, uh, either PDCs for your SHRM certification or uh, recertification credits for HRCI. I do see some questions in the chat or comments. I'll, I'll um, get to those in a second. But I'd also want to share our largest chapter is South OC. 
Pyra South OC, um, it, at the height of our uh, growth spur in 2019, they, they had over 700 members just in Pyra South OC. Uh, you could attend one of their meetings and uh, expect to see 100 HR practitioners and uh, adjacent professionals. Our uh, second largest chapter is Pyra Los Angeles. They have a meeting coming up next week uh, at the City Club. Great venue and fantastic uh, topic next week. I forget what it is. It, it's coming up on a, on, a, on a slide. And our third largest is North OC. Uh, we go as far north as Antelope Valley, and uh, with, which is Pyra Antelope Valley and Pyra Ventura County. They meet out of Camarillo and we go far as far east as Palm Springs area. That's our Pyra Coachella Valley uh, chapter and they meet out of the Palm Desert. So I'm gonna pause for a second and um, see. Okay, Molly says, Oh, is that Mark Allen from Pepperdine? I love him. I, he's a great professor out of Pepperdine. I see you unmuted, Molly. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, um, I just spoke to Mark Allen since I'm in the MBA for Pepperdine, and he's been super grateful. Um, he's spoken before at a Pyra event for in Anaheim. He's spoken for Swarm. He's the director, the head of the MS program there. And so I'm super excited to have him speak. Um, this is one of his newer um, events that he wanted to speak about. And so we just confirmed that I sent the paperwork in today. So we're super excited to have him and, you know, hopefully get more students from Pepperdine to come join. Fantastic. Thank you, Molly. Uh, I, I've heard Mark Allen speak. I see that's going to be in April. That's going to be a great meeting. Uh, I also am going to respond to Jerry. Yes, we have a... Um, uh, a chapter in Riverside. We also have a chapter in Temecula Valley. And I'm going to send you in the chat their email addresses. Hopefully I got them right. And we also have a chapter out of Pomona and they're called uh, Inland Valley. So um, I, I think they have something on the calendar, which I'll share, but always reach out to them. Um, they'd be happy to help help you uh, get started with the chapter. All right, let's move on. Um, we also have three specialty groups. One of them is Pyra Foundation. Uh, they're, they're a separate 501c3. They uh, fundraise to offer scholarships throughout the year. They also have their own, oh, by the way, something I didn't mention, and Mark kind of talked about it. Each of our 18 chapters has its own board. So it's a great opportunity for you to volunteer and take on a leadership position. Great way to to network, Todd, I, I know you, volunteering, this is one of my sayings, volunteering and taking on a volunteer leadership position is networking on steroids. So talk to Mark, see if there's any volunteer opportunities at Pyra Long Beach. Um, each of our chapters have a volunteer board. Most of them are pretty saddled right now, but they might be needing people to join committees and things like that. Um, so Pyra Foundation also has a volunteer uh, board. They've done some great work. I think they were established in the 80s. Uh, and they also did some workforce development stuff. They uh, published a, a pamphlet called You and Your First Job. Um, they have two scholarship windows, one in the spring and one in the winter. And so keep an eye out for any information about that. They just finished their uh, winter scholarship. The deadline was December 19th. Uh, but keep looking out for the the spring window, which is opening up. And usually those scholarships are for people pursuing their degree in HR or their HR certification through Sherman HRCI. Uh, we have the government advocacy team. They are focused on uh, working on, uh, usually working with the Cal Sherm Legislative Affairs Group. They're called the A-Team. Um, and Cal Sherm and Sherm, does lobby in DC and in California. They have some lobbyists at work, but our group does not lobby, but they work with Cal Sherm. They're abreast of the latest laws that are coming through. Um, they have quarterly chats with local electeds um, so that you can talk to them about the issues that may be affecting your workplace or your employer or your employees um, and just so that you can keep abreast of that. And some of you might be interested in, in uh, legislative affairs or in politics. This is a great way 
through Pirate to get involved and be in the know uh, regarding this. If, um, here's some QR codes, or if you have any additional information or questions, not information, about our government advocacy team or legislative affairs, please let me know. Um, let's see. I have a question here I'm going to pause for. Let's see. Pyre over associations like Sherm understand that Pyre is an affiliate or NHRA. Great question, Vince. Um, so Pyre, I, uh, what are competitive advantages is that we have the largest local HR community, face-to-face -face community through our chapter. So as a Pyre member, you could attend any of our chapter meetings and meet face to face with the HR community. The SHRM at large folks don't have a, a, a centralized place or ongoing consistent meetings where you're, they're going to be able to meet. Obviously, they meet at the conference, the SHRM conference, was in, which is in Chicago this year. Um, but uh, we facilitate that through our 18 chapters. I think um, NHRA, the National Human Resources Association, is a great organization to join. It's smaller. And um, if you are interested in uh, connecting with a smaller, more uh, kind of exclusive uh, senior HR community, that would be the group for you. So hopefully that answers your question. If you have any additional questions, let me know. No, great. Thank you so much. So you're saying NHRA is more for manager level and above? More like VP level, Vince. I understand. Like okay. VP, but, HR. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. I, and by the way, I am the director of membership, but my message to you all is have a community. One of the things that uh, we learned, uh, I think, came crystal clear through the pandemic is it, people and people need to stay connected and I think that's what Pyra does um, and uh, through volunteerism through the chapter meetings uh, but if you don't think Pyra's for you please find a community that you think is for you even if you decide yeah uh, this wasn't for me I need to join another organization I get that try us out uh, but you could always attend NHRA meetings they're in LA and Orange County. Orange County is our largest one. Uh, and check them out too. But just find a community so that you're not doing all this alone. Um, some of our, uh, I'm trying to get to the, the seminars and conferences quickly because many of you had questions on that. Uh, but here's the five most, wait, six most popular uh, benefits. One is it's the consistent, affordable, and actionable professional development for HR. Uh, you're going to see on our last slide, I think I couldn't even fit all the professional development on one slide that we have available just in February. It's really low cost compared to others. And again, this is where uh, these chapter meetings are where you're going to meet uh, other HR practitioners that have gone through what you might be going through. Or, um, you know, one of our volunteers leaders said that this is where they created their HR Fab Five. And what she meant was, this is where she collected the relationships with five HR professionals that she keeps on speed dial. Every time something really goes haywire at the office, um, she's able to call these people that are outside her organization, outside her department to get a, a, you know, some best practices from. Because sometimes, I mean, I remember being an OD professional, HR can get kind of lonely. Um, you know, some of the best HR managers in general want you to network, not just internally within your organization, but externally to bring in outside ideas and different perspectives. So this is where you're going to do that. Uh, we have free webinars. I talked about that. The California HR Education and Compliance. I think someone here asked about that. We have that. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We also have the Compliance Center Mineral. Uh, it, uh, I'll uh, the next slide, I'll share more information on that, but you get that for free with your membership. It includes a job description builder, an HR hotline. Um, for example, the Pirate Comply, it's all through Mineral. So maybe you've heard of that platform. That That is our partner. Um, the Pirate Compliance Center office offers hundreds of uh, sample policies, forms, uh, an employee handbook builder, a job uh, salary comparison tool, um, webinars, all kinds of uh, 
fantastic information. Uh, it also includes Pyra Live. Uh, it is staffed, it's kind of an HR hotline. It's staffed by senior certified uh, professional, HR professionals from uh, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. And say you just want to get a second opinion. Um, they're not attorneys, by the way. I always encourage HR to have a general counsel or, you know, an attorney on their speed dial because that is necessary. You do not want to get into a situation where you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on, um, on legal fees. So uh, uh, whoever asks about compliance piece is very smart. You want to you want to be the best educated person with respect to California law at your organization. But this is a great place to call if you want to just get a second opinion or you need access to a form pretty quick. Uh, they usually do answer the phone. Sometimes they'll call you back, but within 24 hours, they will co contact you and they always follow up in it with the email with whatever documentation you may need. Uh, another fantastic um, tool that we just added last year is Pyra Learn. This is an enterprise-wide learning uh, software platform uh, that includes around 200 courses that you can use to train your employees. You can create uh, 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 professional development tracks. Uh, it covers uh, the sexual harassment, mandatory sexual harassment and OSHA trainings are an added cost, but they, they do have some harassment training. They have customer service training, et cetera. And if you're interested in that, um, I can, if you go to the pyra.org slash workplace, there is a list of all of the, the courses that are available to you to send out to your teams. And it's all included with your Pyra membership. If you have a HR team larger than uh, three people, you might consider uh, just purchasing a membership for your entire team um, that has some advantages. For example, you all have one renewal date. Um, you can, if you are the, the primary account holder, you could track um your team's professional development because sometimes what i find is that uh you know employers purchase the a pyra membership for their hr teams but their uh, hr team members aren't doing any webinars or not attending any meetings and so i think this is a great way for you to track that and also you know build in a reminder in your quarterly hr meetings to have conversations with the team it's like what exposures are in the organization what are the things that they need to build mastery in and follow up that they're developing these tools and having conversations about what they're learning? I see something in the chat, so. Uh, Vince, uh, can you unmute? I don't quite understand your question. Um, it said, if, uh, the previous slide, it said that there's workforce training available. Uh, maybe it was a different slide, but it had Pyro, there we go. Um, train your entire workforce with over 200 online courses. Um, does that require a corporate account to be able to share that with all no. that workforce or? No, if you're a Pyra member, you can uh, utilize that tool and build learning tracks and things of that sort. So if you, um, if you want more specific guidance on that, uh, we could talk um, offline, but if you uh, call the number here, uh, and Vince, you just joined, so, I'd have to check to see if you're, uh, it does take a, a week or so for you to get uploaded into this platform. But if you call this number, they can provide you with some technical assistance as to how to get started with that. But Great. you do not Thank need you. to be an HR team or corporate member. It's for everybody. Gotcha. Thank you, Lily. Sure. Uh, volunteer, volunteer. I told you before, volunteer leadership is like networking on steroids. You know, this is also a great way to be, build your leadership skills. Um, uh, this is where people you're going to get noticed. People are going to see your work ethic, the quality of your work, uh, how you delegate, how you manage your time. And so it's a great uh, kind of not risky way to do that. I think someone asked about uh, volunteering at the conference. That's another great way. If you are interested, at the end of this uh, presentation, you'll see my email, really simple, lili at pyra.org. Send me a note. Um, our volunteer applications for the conference will go out early March, and we should confirm them uh, by the end of March, the latest. Uh, and uh, usually the way that works is that you volunteer for a certain portion and get the next portion of the conference free. And you also get the on-demand product free. Uh, 
If you haven't been to conference, I'll talk to, about that in a bit, but it's fantastic. It's the highlight of my year and I'm standing on my feet for 15 hours a day, uh, but it's just, uh, we have like this year, it's gonna be a little smaller because we are in recovery mode, but I think we have 30 learning sessions, receptions planned, um, Sherm, the Sherm bookstore is gonna be there. Uh, so uh, not only is it a fantastic place to build your, your network, uh, but also a great learning opportunity for everybody. So let's talk a little bit about HR education. As members, you get at least $10 off all of the chapter meetings and you get a, you get a discount on the conferences and seminars. Um, if you're a non-member and want to attend the conferences, typically the way we price it is that a higher membership is built in. Um, Someone asked about HR certification. I think this is a good time. If you want to put it in, in the chat, any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, there's research out there that you can increase your salary by uh, $20,000 with a senior certification. So that's the SHRM SCP or the SPHR through HRCI. I mean, nothing trumps experience. So you, uh, employers are definitely looking for experience. But um, this HR uh, certification, as you saw earlier, 40% of our uh, members are certified. I think someone asked about the, the uh, we have a career center. Uh, in the chat, I'm gonna put the link to the career center and in the follow-up email, I'm also gonna um, put some information in there for you. Um, you could upload your resume. On, I'll be honest with you, um, with all the layoffs and the economic uncertainty, we're not seeing a lot of HR jobs out there, um, but I think this is a great time to volunteer and network, put your resume out there. You know, it's all about who you know. Uh, even the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has some stats out there that have been around for a long time. Between 70 and 80% of the people that get a job get it through their network. So I just wanted to add that to whoever was curious about our career center and career development uh, opportunities. Um, some of our chapters also do programming around career development. So um, uh, you want to look out for that on the calendar. Uh, here's a, a great example of some a new uh, a programming that we have coming up. Uh, we have unconscious inclusion. It's a um, a new certificate program that Pyra is doing in partnership with Rework Work. And the first session starts on February 20th. It's a 13 week program. And uh, just today she did, uh, Stacy did a, a free webinar on how to approach DEI differently. Uh, you know, it's gonna look differently, I think now, uh, given that kind of that, uh, the, the trend of DEIs kind of simmered down a bit. So, but it, it is important and it's really around you know, managing corporate culture in a way that people are motivated and feel like they belong. Okay, many of you had questions about seminars and conferences. This is the time, if you wanna unmute, I have 11 more minutes with you. Let me know if there's any specific questions, but this is our conference of the year. It's happening in Anaheim at the Hilton Anaheim on May 20th through the 22nd, um, some things I could tell you about. I, I think I already mentioned, we have uh, 28 to 30 learning sessions. We're also attendees, first come, first serve, are gonna have access to 30 free, free, or included in your in your conference registration is better uh, a better way to say it, um, coaching. Uh, anywhere, coaching around HR strategy uh, to leadership development and how to develop yourself as an HR leader. So. That's gonna be uh, first on the first come, first come, first serve basis if you're registered for the conference. So great opportunity to get some coaching there. Don't see anything in the chat. So I will keep going. Mark, you've been a little quiet. I'm sorry, I know I'm, I'm talking everybody's ear off. Uh, did you wanna add anything about volunteering and what volunteering and hire has meant to you? Yes, <clears throat> volunteering is is one of you know at the part of one of my you know personal core values you know and it's in the giving that we receive. So you know for me you know being a voluntary leader for Pyra serves many purposes you know both 
personally and professionally, but from a professional standpoint, I just can't emphasize the fact that as HR practitioners, you know, sometimes we have nobody to go commiserate to here. So want to uh, emphasize that, you know, Pyra, uh, you know, gives you some strength um, in uh, the HR community. You have people that you can connect with to talk about anything, um, you know, you want to commiserate with or, you know, kind of best practices are like, hey, I'm looking to update this uh, handbook or I'm looking to do for a new policy. You can network with your peers and they can give you guidance and direction on, you know, the, the latest trends and the best practices in HR, um, you know, the professional development and the educational workshops are invaluable. You know, uh, the, the landscape of HR is ever changing. And for us to stay on top of our, our game and be at peak performance, you know, we need to be ingrained in the, in the fabric and the culture of the HR community. And what better way to do it through Pyro membership? It's good stuff, I'm telling you. Uh, so yeah, so welcome. Everyone here, welcome. I'm so happy to see everybody here. I want you guys to keep the momentum going and, and, and engage through you know, the volunteer activities, engage through the networking, engage through the professional development workshops. It's, you know, you bring value to the organization that you go back to after these workshops and after you network to these people. And, and from that standpoint, if you're looking to advance your career and keep that for, forward momentum there, if you could clearly illustrate to your, uh, your, your, your employer, your direct boss, your direct supervisor, the value that you bring to the table, and partly because of the HR network that you're involved with, that sometimes equates to promotions, to higher wages, to more you know, added responsibilities, um, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect of all of this um, is immeasurable. You know, it's opened up plenty of doors for me and I'll, I'll forever be grateful for Pyra and, and Sherm. So yeah, you, come on down, Mark. come on down, the Long Beach chapter. <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna ask you, uh, you know, you, you being a, a senior HR practitioner, how do you view if um, your employees when you see them volunteering in the community? I mean, what does that say to you? And, and you, you know volunteerism volunteering um again like it's it's at the kind of the core of of of, of what you know personally kind of my morals and and you know it's it's uh where else would we all be if we didn't have someone else help us out along the way and and it's when you when you volunteer and you give you give of your time you know you get back so much more than what you've been given and so in, in that regard, you know, it's, it's beneficial in many ways. So, and so when I see my peers or my employees or anyone that's involved in my community volunteer and give back, it warms my heart. I just love it. <laughs> so it's good stuff. Yeah, I know some of my greatest mentors, um, which I've yeah. had some, I've been lucky. I have some fantastic supervisors. Uh, they've, they've encouraged me to volunteer in the community, whether it's something that is, you know, focused on my profession or just in the community in general, because they're seeing me develop the skills they need leaders in their organization develop. Like I said earlier, that time management skills, uh, at, at handling uh, multiple priorities at once, uh, dealing with difficult situations. These are all things that you may ha have happened at Pyra through your volunteer leadership, but are, are skills that you need at work. Right, Mark? 100%. You know, it's, it's, those, it's those people skills, those soft skills on, uh, you know, conflict resolution, situational judgment, how to have those difficult conversations. You're going to learn that stuff here at Pyra. Um, especially through volunteering or uh, some of the events or the educational workshops that you'll join here. But, you know, that kind of stuff is what we pass on to our, our, our peers, that stuff we pass on to our employees and, and we bring back to the workplace, which all equates to you bringing more value uh, overall. Yeah. Vince, you want to unmute? I think that was a great question. Uh, do you want to ask that live? Yeah, sure. I, uh, as a new person to the HR community, of course, I'm very eager and hungry to learn as much as possible, network as much as possible. Um, so I'm curious, because you just said that it seems like there's so many members that aren't 
SHRM or HRCI um, <clears throat> certified? You know, what is their perception or other company leadership's perception if you are uh, leaving work, uh, obviously approved, but if you're leaving work to attend and participate in uh, HR associations like Pyra? I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how you present the idea of, and you give context and color and rationale behind the reasons behind taking off, taking valuable time off work to go participate in these more or less, it, we're kind of a work related activity. Um, tell them it's, 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 uh, not only that you get the professional credits if you're HR certified, but you, you're, you're advancing your career, you're bringing value um, back to your company and it's making you a better employee, a better HR practitioner and a better leader. So it's not what you say, it's how you say it, you know, it pitch the idea. And we've got, I think there's templates that resources available on, on ways to present or ask your employer um, for time off to attend these activities. In the end, uh, any elevated high level ranking position will see the value in it. And if they're invested in you, they'll allow you to go because it's professional development. And in the end, you'll just be a better employee because of it. And they'll see that. And if they don't, then maybe, I don't know, question, question who you're working for, you know? Thank you, Mark. Thank yeah. you, Mark. Similar, similar response, but you know, it really does depend on your organization and the value they place on professional development. And um, I think uh, uh, the culture, nowadays with a new generation coming in i've heard you know millennials want to they want to develop they want to belong they they want to feel like they can um you contribute and so they are looking for organizations that will invest in them uh but there are organizations out there that you know are keeping time they want you there at 8 30 and they want their eight hours of work you know um so like mark said you got to be careful and, and you know uh look at those organizations who have a reputation of investing and, you know, not, you know, sticking to the time. I know I've been so fortunate that uh, my current employer, I get a, a stipend uh, for uh, my annual professional development. He encourages us to do things outside in our community. Uh, and so it's not a problem, but I do hear from folks that it can be a problem in some organizations. Well, we're right about time. Um, uh, so I challenge you all, you know, attend a Pyra meeting if you have it, even do a webinar. So register today. Uh, there's so many things happening. So uh, you heard Long Beach is having an event in March and also an event in April that's probably going to be up in the calendar soon. Uh, Gateway Cities, which is in Cerritos, they're meeting on Valentine's Day. If you're in, someone told me they were, I think it's Leah, compliance stuff. Go to the Pyra Gateway meetings. It's an early morning meeting on, uh, I think it's Wednesday, it's February 14th. Uh, there are, that, that chapter, by the way, is very heavy on employment law and compliance. They meet out of a law firm. Uh, and I call them Ayler. I don't know, Mark, if you remember, uh, it's Atkinson, Loya, something, something. Yep, I that's, it. <laughs> that's it. A-A-L-R. Yeah, yeah. So that if you want to um, uh, keep track of a chapter that's very focused on compliance, that's one of the chapters. All of our chapters have a different environment and culture and, you know, uh, area with different needs. So uh, I think I'm going to go to the Pyra South OC meeting, the HR leader of the future, because they're really talking about the changes that are coming up for HR, given the environment. So really interesting. But I challenge you, go to one a Pyra meeting every quarter this year. And if it's not a Pyra meeting, go to another HR association. There's a couple small ones out there. Um, or if it's not HR, maybe it's OD in LA. Maybe it's the uh, uh, Association of Ta Ta Training and Development. But uh, find your tribe, go to meetings. I definitely encourage it. Uh, just some two last slides. You can connect with us online. You'll get these slides. We're on LinkedIn very strong uh, connections there. Instagram, we're on X, and um, always feel free to reach out to me. Mark, I think has put his email in the chat. So reach out to Mark, go to a Pyra Long Beach event to meet Mark and Molly. And uh, uh, Jennifer, thank you for joining, fantastic. And she's gonna go to a Long Beach meeting, Mark. So 
Great. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. It's one o'clock. I think I covered everything. Mark, thank you so much for bearing with me. <laughs> I know that uh, I talked a lot and covered a lot, but um, I hope this was valuable to you. Always feel free to reach out to me. Mark is a resource as well. Mark, any parting words? Liliana, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this special uh, webinar today. I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate being a member and a volunteer leader at Pyra. So thanks again. I'm grateful. Thank you. We can't do it without you, Mark and Molly. <laughs> yeah. I see you. Well, um, have a great rest of your day. And uh, I won't probably see you next week. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. And, oh. and you know, be good to yourselves. And stay Bye, everyone. Day. Thank you. Thanks, Eliana. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you.